FM is not just one of the most powerful FM synths ever made, it's also one of the most versatile. Packing in eight synchronizable wave oscillators, two sample operators, and a deep modulation matrix, FM allows for sounds associated with iconic synths such as the Mighty Access Virus, the Yamaha DX7, and the lavish Yamaha GS1. But beyond its unparalleled synth emulation capabilities lies its true superpower, an outrageously deep modulation matrix. This matrix provides endless possibilities and lends itself to the creation of truly unique FM sounds. The added bonus of a dual filter, a sophisticated arpeggiator, and a quadruple effects section makes FM a creative powerhouse. Whether your target sound is warm or bright, aggressive or delicate, FM can truly deliver. In this video, we'll break down the user interface, both pointing to and explaining the purpose of each panel and page. We'll begin with the browser, so you can start auditioning the library of over 500 sounds right away. If you haven't already found it, the browser can be accessed by clicking the folder button at the top of the UI. Let's take a look at the header section. If you click on the FM logo, a window pops up with some additional information on the synth. Plus, there is also an option to check for updates. You can click anywhere on the window to hide it again. The folder button brings the browser page into focus, as we've already seen, while the program interface button opens the main edit page. The name of the instrument currently loaded is displayed here. Clicking on the name opens a list where you can scroll or search for sounds. You can also navigate between sounds by clicking the back and forth arrow buttons. The I button opens the instrument information window, where you can both view and edit information regarding the actual sound. The save button, as you'd expect, lets you save the instrument, and should you wish, the name of the instrument can be changed while saving. The master volume dial allows you to adjust the overall volume of FM while the meter to the left of the dial displays the outgoing audio signal. Click on the gear button and the global menu appears displaying additional parameters. The author field allows you to enter your name. This will automatically populate the sound designer field of any newly created sounds. Zoom settings can be selected here. You can also scale the UI by dragging the bottom right corner. Here, you can enable or disable MPE mode. Enabling multiple cores can improve CPU performance on certain systems, typically on older computers running multiple instances of FM. I'd suggest trying both out to see how your system responds. Control behavior lets you choose between linear and circular. If set to circular, you change a value of a rotary control by clicking on it and moving your mouse in a circular motion around the control. If set to linear, rotary controls behave like value display controls. Moving the mouse up or right increases a value, moving it left or down decreases it. This is the default behavior. OpenGL activates or deactivates the OpenGL graphic engine. If deactivated, the graphic performance is reduced. We recommend only switching OpenGL off if you experience incompatibilities or odd behavior. The location fields allow you to open the folder where the sounds or samples are placed. If you wish to move the preset or sample content, you need to show FM the new data path. At the bottom of the window, you'll find an Install Content Packs button. If you have downloaded a content pack outside of the Download Manager, click this button to locate and install the pack. And finally, there's a Check for Updates button. Click on this button to open the Traction Marketplace. If an FM update is available, it will be shown here. To close the global settings menu, simply click on the gear button once more. Clicking the question mark button opens the PDF user guide. The panic button executes an all notes off command to terminate stuck notes. And finally, directly below you'll find buttons that will reveal both the public and private instruments folders. And next to these is a refresh button. This will scan all folders and update the instruments accordingly. The majority of the browser is taken up with the tags. Here you can narrow down your sound searches based on pack, author, category, style, and character. Results are displayed in this panel to the right, 
and double clicking on a preset loads the instrument. You can quickly favourite sounds by clicking the star icon next to the preset name. Favourites can then be viewed by clicking on the Show Only Favourites button above. Directly below the preset list is a search field. If you have a specific preset or search term in mind, this might be the quickest way to find your sound. Information for the loaded preset is presented in this box. The bottom of the browser consists of the five macros, a keyboard, a pitch wheel, and a mod wheel. The macro parameters influence the level envelopes and effect levels across all layers. They can be very useful as you can load and tweak sounds without having to navigate to the corresponding edit pages. FM provides a virtual keyboard with 128 keys. Simply click on a key to play the corresponding note. You can shift up and down the keyboard by clicking the arrows either side of it. To alter either the pitch or mod wheel, simply click on the wheel and drag it up or down. The main edit page is accessed by clicking the Program Interface button, located next to the Browser button. Along the top, you'll find its layers. FM offers four layers, and each layer offers a full range FM synthesis engine, an equalizer, an arpeggiator, an effects section, and comprehensive modulation options such as LFOs, sources, and modifiers. Simply click on a layer tab to select the desired layer for editing. The parameter page switches immediately and shows the settings for the current layer. Each layer can be easily muted or soloed, and a dedicated volume slider for each layer is located below. Each layer also has its own pan control. The copy and paste buttons allow you to copy the settings of a layer into the clipboard and then paste these settings to another layer. By double clicking on the third paper bin symbol, you can initialize the corresponding layer to its basic settings. To the far right of the layer section, you'll find the CPU usage display. This is used to monitor how much of your computer's CPU is being used by the instrument. On the left side of the user interface, you'll find subsections for the FM matrix, FM operators, the two filters, the arpeggiator, effects, and layer options. At the very top of this section is a button that opens the powerful FM matrix. Here we can see at a glance which operators are active and what is routed to what. Here we have only operator 8 in its basic state, assigned to the amplifier output. You can feed one operator into another by simply clicking and dragging on the matrix. Here I'm modulating operator 8, the carrier, with operator 7, the modulator. You can feed the output of operator 8 back into operator 7 by again simply clicking and dragging. You should note that in FM, any operator can be a carrier and a modulator at the same time. Moving down this list, you'll find FM's noise generator, sample operators, wave operators, and filters. Directly below these, we can access the EQ and arpeggiator pages, followed by the effects page, mod matrix, and layer page. FM's master settings are located in the bottom left corner. Here you can see how many voices are playing, the amount of voices allocated to the current preset, and the master tuning. Clicking external will sync FM to the tempo set by your door. By disabling it, you can adjust the BPM as you please by simply dragging up and down. And finally, you'll find the arpeggiator master on, off, and latch controls. Note that the ARP must first be enabled for these buttons to work. The final panel consists of seven pages accessible via individual tabs. These include the macros page, which features assignable XY pads, sliders, and knobs. And then we have LFO1, LFO2, Sources, Modifier 1, Modifier 2, and the Modifier 3 tab. The 18 purple buttons directly below the tabs put FM into assign mode. For example, if I click on LFO1, we're now in assign mode. By clicking and dragging on the start phase parameter of operator 8, I've now assigned LFO1 to it. 
Clicking back on the purple LFO1 button takes FM out of assign mode, leaving the assignment in place. If an arrow is illuminated next to a parameter, this indicates that it has been assigned to something. If you click on the arrow, you'll be provided with information on the assignment. In this case, we can see it's assigned to Flow LFO 1. You can also check assignments via the Mod Matrix page, which can be accessed by clicking here. Notice how the assignment we just made is listed. I hope this video helps you to navigate the user interface and gives you the confidence to explore on your own. We'll be following up with additional tutorials which focus more on the principles of FM synthesis and designing your own sounds within FM. Thanks for watching.